Ah. Ah. Oh, I did it again. Well, happy holidays, everyone. It is pretty much nearly Christmas time, and that does mean we are very close to the end of the year. And it also means another thing. It means it's part two of the Rodan Festival. We've done the summons. Now it's time for the main man himself, and that would be General Rodan. And engage in jolly cooperation. Now he is split into multiple parts, as you can see here. So first thing, oh God. So obviously first thing we need to do will be to piece him together and then prime him. Now he is going to be the focal point of the whole diorama. So we're gonna spend a bit of time trying to make him as intricate and as interesting looking as possible because what is a festival without its headline act? I'm just gonna get my desk set back up and we'll piece him together. So what we have is, very hard to see over this beard, we have, we have his little horse, we have the man himself, we have his two swords, voila, and we have, of course, his great bow. Let's glue him together. there he is in all his glory so what we need to do now is just get him primed so here he is he is fully primed and looking pretty badass got our airbrush got our white ink I put the beard back on but I feel like it's already <laughs> it's already irritating my face <coughs> so from a high up top down angle <coughs> I'm going to get spraying on top down and highlight this bad boy up. So there he is, Zenithal highlighted, looking pretty cool. Yeah, we've got all the nice contrast going on. What we need to do, like what we did with some of the other summons with the armor, is we need to go around and map out all of the highlights we want to be adding in. So for gold, I'm not going to be using metallic colors to do this. Instead, we're gonna be using some different shades of yellows and different shades of browns. So we have Flash Glitz Yellow, which is the brightest yellow. We have Avalon Sunset, which is a dark yellow. We have Balor Brown, which is a mid-tone sort of yellow brown. Mournfang Brown, which is a lighter brown. We have Catacomb Flesh, which is a sort of like darker brown to that. And then we have the darkest brown, which is Rhinox Hide. So first things first, what we wanna do is map out where all of our highlights are gonna be on the armor and then we can map out where our shadows are gonna be, and then we can start blending between all of these different tones to create, hopefully, some form of gold NMM. I'm not making any promises, but that's the intention. I'm gonna be using the Balor Brown, because we want sort of like a pre-highlight color. So this is a good tone to start with. And kind of following where the Zenithal highlight has picked out our places for highlighting, I'm gonna kind of follow that to sort of generate where I want the highlights to kind of be. Now, when I had my first playthrough of Elden Ring, on the lead up to Radan, there was so much hype surrounding him. Like there was so much saying that he is literally the hardest Souls boss across any of the games. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder, wonder how accurate that actually is. And then when I finally reached the Radan Festival, at the castle, I was like, okay, well, it's pretty late. I've had a very long session. So I'll probably pop a pause in it here and I'll come back tomorrow to fight him because I sort of want to be fresh and in a good mindset to take him on. So I was like, okay, it's fine. I can put pause in it here and I can come back later on to fight him. Little did I know that the morning of when I was gonna fight him, they dropped a patch and that patch was when they nerfed him and I was unaware. So when I came to fight him, I absolutely destroyed him. And I was like, what the hell? What a completely underwhelming boss fight. I mean, it was cool, don't get me wrong. I was like, yeah, I mean, what a cool boss. The actual festival itself and the whole fight um, when you've got all the summons and you're all taking him on and they're all getting absolutely battered. Obviously you've got patches running away, which is hilarious. But I was like, this is not living up to the level of difficulty that people were hyping it up to be. And then obviously I realized what happened. I had fought him 
literally a couple of hours after it was patched, which was, oh, that was upsetting. So I'll be interested to see what your guys' take on fighting Radan was. Did you fight him pre-patch? Did you fight him when they nerfed him? Or did you fight him when they patched him again and fixed him and he was you know, back to being relatively hard again. Be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on that. But when I eventually get around to doing New Game Plus, I'm going to get a different experience altogether fighting him. So, you know, all is not lost. At least I'll still have that. So it's starting to come on. There we are. Getting those highlights built in. What I'm probably going to do to save time and so you don't have to see everything twice is I'll probably paint one side fully and then I'll just replicate exactly what I did to the other side. So we have here the pre-highlight kind of colour done across the armour and the swords, everything that's gold basically. I realised that actually what I painted here is part of the cape so I've just quickly just gone over with some white because we'll paint that red later on but you know. So next up what we need to do is add in the shadows to him so all of the sort of like opposite areas to where we've just done this sort of pre-highlight. We're going to go in with some Rhinox hide. Oh god I've just broken something now. I'm always breaking something. I think to make things easier for this video, what I will probably actually do is I'll just do the entire torso, just outlining what my process is for doing this, and then I'll kind of just replicate around it afterwards so we don't have to see every little bit being done. Probably an easy way of doing it, isn't it? So all the little shadowy bits, sort of bits that will be facing away from the light source, I'm gonna coat with some Rhinox hide. So there we are, there's the shadows on the torso coated with Rhinox hide. Now what we shall do is we're going to take some Avalon Sunset and within the Balor Brown that's already been coated on I'm going to pick out the highlights of this. Okay so that's with the Avalon Sunset added in. You see we're slowly starting to bring some brightness into proceedings. I think I will try some flash glitz yellow to see how it how it highlights brighter points. Yeah, that's with some flash glitz yellow put in. And then next what I'll do before we start glazing and blending is I will add in some Mournfang brown into the mix, just into the shadows. Okay, here we have some Mournfang brown mixed into the shadows. So all I'm gonna do now is just mix in different tones and glazes between them, really thin down and just start blending them together a bit more. So there's a, the sort of main torso kind of done with the sort of style that I'm going for. So we've got the sort of like dark Rhinox hide in the recesses and we're sort of blending up through the Catacan flesh and the Mournfang brown up into the sort of yellows where we've got the the Balor Brown, which is the dark yellow, which is what we started with, up into the Avalon Sunset, and then into the sort of Flash Glitz Yellow. I kind of toned that down a bit, and I was kind of mixing in a bit of white with the Avalon Sunset to generate some highlights. So using those colors that I used on this, on the main torso, I have now colored in all of the areas of gold on his armor. So we've got the bow sort of center and the tips, also the legs, the back, these pads, the knee pads, things, the legs, the arms, the wrists, the hands, the swords, the helmet, all painted up in that same style, which is looking pretty damn cool. I think I'm gonna move on to doing the hair and the cape, as they're the two next big blocks to do. So for that, we're gonna need some red, and the red we're gonna use is some contrast red, because it will work quite nicely with our Zenithor highlighting job. So that's gonna be some Flesh Terrors Red Contrast. And with this red, make sure it's thinned down on the wet palette, and slowly start applying that over the sort of hair here that's coming off of the helmet. See how nicely the contrast is reacting to this Zenithal highlight job. We're getting some real nice vibrant reds that are sitting on the white and they're sort of softening off into darker tones as it goes down the brightness within the highlight. So what I'll do is I'll just apply the same contrast to the cape. There we go, there is the cape and the hair done with Flesh Terror's Red. 
So we'll just have to let that dry for a wee bit. But as we can see it there, it's reacted really nicely to the zenithal highlight job. Looks really cool. So next up, we're gonna paint the fur details around. I'm gonna go with some Gadagak sewer. Okay, so that's the legs done. And now I'm just gonna do the sort of these sort of underarm parts here. Just being careful not to ruin our lovely gold armor, because that would be a nightmare to try and fix. Okay, so that's the dark parts applied with some Garagak sewer. We are getting there. Now, before we move on to the fur, there are some other even darker parts which we can coat with some Black Legion, and that would be these straps at the front here. I think I'm just going to have to coat the whole thing and then just go over the details with the gold. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit tricky to try and go around what I've just detailed in without messing it up. So just going to mess it up to go back over it again. So for the fur, I'm going to base it with some Skaven Blight Dinge. Okay, so there's both arms painted with some Skaven Blight Dinge on the fur. As you can see, he's slowly coming together quite nicely. There we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some Storm Vermin Fur, which is a lighter fur colour than the Skaven Blight Dinges. And all I'm going to do is grab one of my lovely Artist Opus dry brushes. And I'll just delicately start dry brushing this onto the fur, just to brighten it up a bit. And then what we can do to brighten it up some more, we can take some Dawnstone, do the exact same thing but even lighter applications. I'm gonna apply a very thin layer of Seraphim Sepia to the lovely fur, just to sort of give it a little bit of shade. It'll give it a little bit of a brownish tint as well. While that's drying, we can work on something else. And that can be this beautiful little face. So I'm gonna take some Gulliman Flesh and I'm just gonna paint in his little face. So for the horns on his face, while we're just letting everything else now dry, I'm going to base them with some more cast bone. I'm going to take a bit of Mournfang brown and I'll use that as the sort of shadows. There we are, two lovely horns done. Now his face is actually a bit darker than I thought. I'm going to base it with some Catacan flesh and then I'm going to darken some parts down with some Rhinox hide. And then we can just bring out a little bit of highlighting and some Mournfang Brown. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint his eyes black and I'm gonna give him some white pupils. So now that the Seraphim Sepia on the fur has dried, I'm gonna do a final little bit of brightening with some long beard gray. So now we've got majority of him done. Do Leonard, so I'm gonna base the skin of his horse with some snake bite leather. I think the hair, the mane, sorry, the mane on the horse is the same as Radan's. So I'm just gonna go back to my red contrast paint. And then for the horse's helmet, it's gonna be the same situation as what we did for Radan's armor, and I'm just gonna paint in his little wee hooves, just with some Abaddon Black. I mean, they're gonna be deep in sand anyway, so we won't see them, but just for the sake of it. Okay, Leonard, you're done. So I think we'll do his swords first because they're gonna need to dry whilst we do other things. Now my plan with the swords is detail in some purple lightning streaks. So because that's my goal, I'm only just gonna do a quick basing of them over the Zenithal highlight with some Basilicanum Grey contrast paint. There's our swords done with Basilicanum Grey, sort of giving a nice shine and sheen to them. And whilst it's drying, we're gonna move on to the bow. Now the bow is black and gold, so Black Legion contrast will be our friend for this. And I'm just gonna coat that all over the parts that aren't gold. Okay, the bow based with some Black Legion. And I'm going to do the same to the arrows sticking out of him. Give them a coating of Black Legion as well. Are they arrows or are they spears? I mean, if they were arrows, they would have to be arrows the size of the ones that he shoots, wouldn't they? Yeah, I don't think they're arrows. I kept calling them that, but they're definitely spears, pikes, and javelins, aren't they? Now, the spears 
and the boat have been based with Black Legion. I'm going to colour in the little sort of cloth parts of them and I'm just going to get a coating of Skeleton Horde Contrast because they're sort of a ropey kind of colour so this will work quite nicely with the Xenothal highlight. But for now that's pretty much the whole thing kind of there. What I do need to do at some point will be to go sort of back through and tidy up little bits here and there but mainly that's the entire thing based. So what I will do, lastly, to finish him off, will be to do this lightning purple streaky kind of business on his swords. So what we're going to need is some Corax white, and I'm going to kind of just start drawing some lightning streaks. This is where I think I might have like gone slightly wrong when I did the Nameless King spear, was I did such tiny lines that it kind of just looked a little bit messy. Whereas like now I'm doing bigger lines that are sort of breaking off from each other. Sort of like that, it's kind of cool. Okay, each side lightened up, ready to rumble. So I'm gonna load up the airbrush. It's the scary bit because it could ruin everything if I'm not careful. So what I want to do is take some of this titanium white ink. Oh, not a video will go by when I'm not knocking everything over. And with this, airbrush. Just gonna sort of paint a halo around the white streaks that I've done. There it is with its airbrush halo done on. Now it's time for the purple and I'm using some prism violet. Right everyone say a prayer, hold your breath, cross your fingers because this is either going to be really good or it might ruin everything. There's only one way to find out. So there we have our purple on and we've got it glowing on some of the parts of the body as well. What I'm going to do now is go back to my wet palette. I'm just going to go back over the white lines again with some of the white and I'm kind of just going back over the purple streaks. But the nice thing is, is that because I'm not going to get it an exact version, the purple will sort of double up as well. And this is, there's their own kind of streaks, which is quite nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some purple paint and that will be some Nagaroth Knight. I'm going to mix it with a bit of Corax White. And then all I'm going to do is take it down to a glaze. I'm just going to kind of wash over these whites. Then I'm going to take a wash of Abaddon Black. I'm going to kind of wash over other areas of the sword. Kind of like so. I'm just going to kind of like go between washing with some, some of the purple and some of the black. Just to build up around the lightning streaks. One sword painted. And I'm basically just going to do that that method across the other one and to the other sides and then we'll check back once that's done. And there he is. General Radan. It's taken quite a while to get him done. Got the swords nice and shiny. Thankfully he is complete. And with that it brings us to the end of part two of this little mini series that I'm doing with the Radan Festival diorama. Next time I will be actually be putting them all together on the sand dunes, so pretty excited to get that done. But for now, that is the end of painting Radan. I hope you enjoyed it. And obviously this is the last episode before Christmas, so I just want to say a big thank you to you for joining me this far on the channel. It honestly means so much to me that you guys just tune in weekly and enjoy the content, like, comment, subscribe, all of those things. It, it means an awful lot to me. Wherever you are, and if you're celebrating Christmas, if you're not celebrating Christmas, if you're with friends and family, if you're just celebrating by yourself, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you have the best time. I hope you have a wonderful festive period. I know that this time of year is a bit, can be tricky for some people, so if you ever feel like you do want to reach out and just have a chat with someone, my DMs are always open on Instagram. But saying that, I wish you all a very happy festive holiday season. Yeah, that's pretty much it from me. I will see you all next week. Merry Christmas, everyone. And don't you dare go hollow. Santa, out.